If you'd like to continue to be mesmerized by my impeccable prowess behind the camera, please do me the honor of subscribing to this fine channel and help me stir up the algorithms stir up the algorithms What's up everybody, Coach Rob here, and it's time for another broadcast. Yes, as promised, I have been creating more content. I've been burning through these videos like a flamethrower through rice paper. At any rate, um, whether they suck or not, I'm gonna keep churning out material. Thank you to my nine loyal subscribers who keep turning in week after week, month after month for engaging new content right here and speaking of engaged if you'd like to continue to be mesmerized by my impeccable prowess behind the camera please do me the honor of subscribing to this fine channel and help me stir up the algorithms stir up the algorithms to get this content out to like-minded individuals who might enjoy these types of shenanigans. Anyway, so please hit the subscribe button, thumbs up guy, all the stuff, leave a comment, it all helps. Anyway, it is at the recording of this video, it is leading into spring. We can kind of see it on the horizon. We can smell it, we can taste it. The days are getting warmer. Mornings are still colder than balls, but days are getting warmer. It's sunny and, and you can just tell spring is coming. So with that, inevitably, the questions start coming in of, hey, I've been acting like a dumbass through the winter time and I've put on a few pounds uh, or I haven't been quite as disciplined or, you know, the holiday crap or whatever. So it's time to lean out. It's time to start getting prepared for spring. What can I do? Fear not, young sportsman, I have the solution. Uh, and it's super, super simple. If anybody, a client, a, an acquaintance, a friend, a loved one, a family member, doesn't matter, might approach me and say, hey, you know, you've been in the game a while. What would you do if you wanted to, you know, drop 10, 15 pounds as we come into warm weather or just for whatever reason doesn't matter when it is if you've engaged in some less than stellar nutritional habits and are trying to write the course and uh clean up a little bit then how would i go about doing that well i'm going to tell you you're in the right place and it's not nearly as complicated as you might think and i do kind of have a little formula um, I'm not real formulaic with a lot of things. It's kind of like, you know, I turn on the switch, I do what I'm supposed to do, I kind of live the lifestyle, and good things happen. But every once in a while, something might come up in your life, and uh, you weren't quite as in tune as you would have liked to have been, and now it's time to right some wrongs and get your shit together. So this is what I would do. And again, it's not terribly difficult but repetition is the mother of skill and sometimes it's good to hear these formulas to reinforce your beliefs and make you realize that it doesn't have to be anything super freaking fancy that you can just jump right on board apply some few basic principles nutritionally physically uh and set the wrong things right anyway so Here's what I would do. I'm going, to, I'm going to jump right into it. If I'm embarking on making some serious changes, number one, you know, clearly right out of the gate, we have to mention the fact that if you're one of these people watching this and you're on a standard American diet or just a shit diet or a processed food diet, you're eating out too much, whatever the case may be, you're not on any kind of a structured, you know, disciplined style or way of eating 
then I would clearly recommend right out of the gate that you adopt a hyper carnivore diet, which means that 75 or, or 70 to 75 percent or more of your food intake is coming from animal based sources, meat, eggs, fish and the like. Uh, something that comes from animals, uh, that's going to be the overwhelming bulk of what you're taking in. Now, you will have to determine the other 30%. So if you are coming into this with some metabolic damage, you feel terribly inflamed, you have a lot of body fat to lose, there seems to be a pretty serious disruption going on for whatever reason, then the amount of, uh, say, carbohydrate matter uh, or vegetable matter or fruit or things like that should be greatly diminished, especially in the early stages of this because we're trying to get rid of some body fat and repair some uh, uh, hormonal disruption, some endoc endocrine disruption. So I would say the more animal based you can get the better. And this is how I would approach that. So it would be a hyper carnivore diet, where the overwhelming amount of food, especially in the early stages of this change up, are coming from animal based sources. And the more repetitive you can get with your way of eating, the better it's going to be for you. Um, so how I would begin, first of all, uh, if you want that food list that I was referring to, that the hyper carnivore food list that, that I like to utilize with myself as well as my clients, you can go to carnivorebodybuilding.com. I have the food list there that you can literally download. It's yours. Check that out. It's free. Have at it. So step one that I would do to, you know, get my together is I would begin with a 36 hour fast. That's my step one. You want to clean out the pipes. You want to rest the digestive tract. You want to rest uh, your body's um, digestion processes. This is great to kind of reset things. It's great for autophagy, clearing out dead cells. And I think maybe the most importantly is getting your brain into the game. When you go through a 36 hour fast, you're setting a tone to say, I am doing something that's not terribly always comfortable for a lot of people, but it, it says I am committed to making this change. And I like a 36 hour fast the best. I think that's the sweet spot. I like it because, you know, let's say you stop eating at 7 p.m. on a Sunday evening well, then that means when you wake up the next morning, you cease to consume food for, you know, the entire day, you know, all the way up, you know, till 7 p.m. would be 24, 24 hours. Then you just keep going. You know, I often I'll just kind of go to bed earlier that night. So I'm just sleeping and I'm not thinking about food or being tempted by food. She so sleep all night long continuing to fast and then you wake up in the morning and then you can break that fast at 7 a.m or later like if so it doesn't really matter so once you get to that 36 hour point at 7 a.m let's say hypothetically then you could break the fast at seven you could break it at eight or just whenever you feel like you're good to go uh that's when you would break the fast now when you break that fast you want to break that fast with protein and fat only no carbohydrate and nothing super, super harsh. Uh, I think the best way to break a fast is with eggs. So when I break a 36 hour fast, for me, it's morning anyway. I'm a morning egg guy for sure. I mean, I'll eat a dozen eggs in a day. I might eat six or eight in the morning and then maybe some mixed in with some of the meats that I consumed later in the day. So I will start with eggs for breakfast to break the fast. It's easy on the gut. Eggs are like nature's multivitamin. They're super nutrient dense, everything a growing boy needs. So that's how I would break my fast. So now I'm going into my day and I'm committed to a hyper carnivore or carnivore diet. However, and the, the purest zealot carnivores uh, are going to yell at me and wag their fingers and kick me out of the club again, shit. Anyway, um, but I think it's a good idea to look at some parameters, to look at some numbers. Yes, ideally, if you're on a strict hyper carnivore or carniv you know, strict carnivore diet, you generally do not have to track. And I would say definitely that long-term tracking is completely unnecessary. However, 
if it's been off the rails for a while, logically, rationally, there's nothing wrong with kind of getting a snapshot or a glimpse of exactly where you are at, crunch the numbers for a day or two, set things right. And what I mean by that is put things macros wise where they need to be to set a course of action for you to start freeing up body fat and making a real change in your body composition. and retaining as much lean muscle or maybe for some building some lean muscle in the process. So how would I go about doing that? Now listen, disclaimer time. This is really important. So lean in and pay attention. Okay. The numbers I'm about to throw at you are not just blanket umbrella for everybody. You know, your results may vary. We don't all dress alike. It could vary substantially all the way across the board. But I'm going to give you an example that is as close as I can get to giving you an idea macros wise in terms of division of macros that is sort of a logical step to building a macros plan that is conducive to burning body fat and retaining lean mass and, uh, you know, so, um, sort of restoring a level of health and vitality. So uh, this is how I would do that. So after your 36 hour fast, you're gonna you know, make sure that you're coming off of that fast into a very strict animal based, you know, hyper carnivore, carnivore diet. And uh, you're going to look at setting some loose macros parameters. Now, for those of you who are completely sold on the fact that if you use the word calorie or if you track calories at all, you are borderline completely insane. Well, that's not the case. I've said many, many times, because I have a very large group of clientele, most of which are used to and understand the caloric model. What I explain to them is, is calories, you know, in terms of counting them aren't necessary, but we can use them in an adjusted capacity to determine if we need to titrate amounts up or titrate amounts down. And when I say amounts, I mean energy intake uh, converse to energy output. So we can still use the calorie model, but we have to understand that its accuracy is not in play. We're going to use them in an adjusted capacity to kind of get a snapshot of where we are. So if uh, a, a general idea, I've got notes and I've got notes based on myself. Coming out of the holidays, you know, yeah, I had a few dietary transgressions. I had a period of time in the month of December where, you know, uh, I enjoyed a few, uh, you know, little days of having some fun around Christmas and New Year New Year's of eating some things that I enjoy that wouldn't always necessarily be on the menu. Couple that with the fact that I had accumulated a little bit of uh, extra body fat beyond what I would normally be carrying. Uh, through early 2023 when I went through some pretty serious hardships with my family. And, uh, you know, that these things happen. So coming into 2024, I realized that, hey, based on my, my current goals, the way I'm pursuing training, the way I'm looking at how I want to look and how I want to perform, when I have the snapshot on my head of, of how I want to be physically, aesthetically, uh, the numbers are a little bit different than when I was a competitive bodybuilder. That was a completely different scenario. So now, since my goals have changed, my numbers have changed slightly too. So this is how I approach that. Number one, I base my numbers and my calculations off goal body weight. I had gotten up to about 208 pounds. I'm five foot 11. I do carry a decent amount of muscle mass, clearly from years and years of heavy strength training, and even through nearly 10 years of competitive bodybuilding. So I do have a decent amount of muscle, which you know is a damn good thing. Thank God. So at 208 pounds, you know, knowing my body, I determined that. I was setting a goal to get to about 190 pounds. 
at 190 pounds, I would be lean. I would be very fit. I would be efficient. Um, I would have some lightly exposed abdominals, but I wouldn't be like super shredded because super shredded is not sustainable or realistic. Uh, that was only something that I strived to do when I was competing in bodybuilding. So instead of being, you know, four or five, six percent body fat, now if I can be around 10 percent body fat in the warmer months and then probably no more than, say, 12 to 14 percent in the winter months, that's right where I want to be because I have great hormonal output. My blood work is great. My performance in the gym is great. I can go out and run a mile if I want. I can engage in pretty intense metabolic work when I want to. So everything kind of is, is clicking on all cylinders or running on all cylinders uh, when I'm looking at it like that. So I had a goal of 190 pounds that I'm working toward. So here's what I did. Um, I would first set my protein intake, okay? So at a goal weight of 190 pounds, you take your goal body weight and you multiply that times 1.25. Now, protein intake in terms of grams of intake per, per pound of body weight or per pound of lean mass, however you wanna calculate it, it's gonna vary by the individual. Sometimes it's, it would be a gram of protein per pound of goal body weight. For some, it would be up to even 1.5 grams of protein per pound of goal body weight, some even more. My sweet spot is somewhere around 1.25 grams per pound of goal body weight. And this number has proven itself time and time again to clients of mine as well. So I take my 190 goal weight, multiply that times 1.25, that gets me 238 grams of protein. It's actually 237.5, I round up, 238. So that's gonna have me about 950 calories by the caloric model of calories coming from protein. So once I have that set, now I know my carbohydrate threshold. I don't have a carbohydrate tolerance. I'm metabolically fit and I can tolerate some carbs very, very well, especially if I utilize them around hard training efforts. So for me, I allocate a carbohydrate, sort of a ceiling at 50 grams a day. So that's 200 calories by the caloric model. Now, some days it might be 75 grams, some days it might be 100 grams, some days it might be 10 grams. So I, you know, I allow for that variance. If I'm a little over, I'm fine. If I'm a little under, I'm fine. Because at the end of the day, I'm still going to be in an energy deficit with these numbers. And with my level of output, it's all going to even out just fine in terms of me continuing to dispose of excess or unwanted body fat. So 50 grams is the number I use. Uh, 50 grams of carbs times roughly four calories per gram is 200 calories, give or take the amount that I take in that day. Then I go to fat, the important macronutrient of dietary fat. I try to get the overwhelming majority of dietary fat from pure animal-based sources, meaning the fat that's contained within steak and red meat, the fat that's contained within egg yolks, the fat that's contained within, you know, certain fatty or cold water fish like salmon, um, dark meat, poultry, things of that nature, um, you know, my uh, uh, pork that I might take in here and there. So for fat, I take my goal weight again and Again, this calculation might vary, but kind of the, the middle point, the sweet spot for me is my goal weight times 0.7 grams. So 190 goal weight times 0.7 would be 133 grams of fat. Now, fat is by the caloric model, nine calories per gram roughly. So that would be 1197 calories by the caloric model of calories from fat. So I take in my 950 calories from protein, my 200 give or take roughly calories of, from carbohydrate, and my 1,197 calories roughly from fat, which gives me a grand total of about 2,350 calories. So that's 2,350 calories. Yes, that's pretty low for 
a guy my size and a guy of my output, so I'm not going to sustain these numbers long term. And again, it's kind of give or take. I can go a little over, a little under. By the total daily energy expenditure calculation, which is not super accurate, so relax, pull your freaking panties out of your butt. I know that it's not but using it as a loose number to get into a ballpark. I take my TDEE, my total daily energy expenditure, by the numbers is roughly around 2,800 calories. Probably more with my output, some days may even be less because it's gonna be all over the map. So by that model, my 2,350 calories that I'm going to embark on during my cut, my carnivore cut, is going to have me in an energy deficit by the numbers. Okay? So, knowing that this isn't super accurate, this is a ballpark range, this is a start, this is a baseline that I start with, and if I was working with a client, I would do the same baseline. Then, pay attention, I would monitor the results of that amount of energy intake and that division of macros over the course of the next four to six weeks. If I see body fat coming off slowly, gradually, over the course of the next few weeks and not too dramatically, because if it's too dramatic, you're running the risk of too deep of an energy deficit and you could uh, lower hormonal output, you could mess up some thyroid regulation, and you could burn some lean muscle, the last damn thing we want. Some lean muscle loss is inevitable when you're cutting, but by using these numbers, that loss is going to be greatly diminished, and we're going to keep it as low as humanly possible. And the goal is going to be obviously burning as much body fat as possible. And within this model, this works rather well. So at 2,350 calories roughly, divided up, you know, by my 190, or excuse me, my 237 grams or 238 grams of protein, my 50 to 75 grams of carbohydrate, and my basically, you know, 133 uh, grams of fat, uh, I'm going to divide that up like that. That's going to have me somewhere in the 40% odd range coming from protein, 50% and some odd range coming from fat, and a very, very small percentage coming from carbohydrate. That seems to work really well, real well for me. So I like that you know, uh, 40 protein, 50 fat, or even 50-50 ratio, that one-to-one -one ratio coming from protein and fat when I'm cutting. Uh, but again, I'm not going into a super hard cut, like, like physique competitor cut. If I were doing that, there would be times where that fat component would be dialed even lower and the protein raised even higher. But that's a very unsustainable model of nutrition. And I do not recommend it for anything longer than just a few weeks. So I wanted to make sure I put that out there. I'd rather it be a slow, meticulous drop in body fat with the preservation of lean mass as a key component and also being very mindful of health hormonal production overall health performance as well i still want to be crushing it in the gym i still want to be sleeping great and having fantastic recovery and so on so that's how i set the numbers so i would set those numbers and then i would track what i eat for a couple of days sometimes maybe even three or four days and get a real visual of what those numbers look like in front of me on a plate. And it doesn't take too much time to kind of determine what you know, 2,350 calories looks like coming from that division of macros. And if I have a really serious, hard, fast goal of getting as lean as I can and getting as, a, as aesthetically jacked and lean as, I, as I'm trying to get for a particular goal or a date or a point in time, then I might track those numbers a couple of days a week, every week, just to always double check that I'm on the right track and I'm not going off the rails somewhere and just to kind of keep me honest, right? So that's how I do that. Now, now that I've got the numbers set, so again, just to, to dial it back, we start with a 36 hour fast. And that fast, by the way, is just water, black coffee, or element. I use, I use element every single day. And it is an absolute lifesaver 
when I'm fasting. I like to do, I actually have a goal. Oh, I have a goal uh, in 2024 of doing at least a 36 hour fast every month for the entire year of 2024. And one thing that makes that super easy is Element. And I've got a link below. If you use my link and you order anything from Element, you get free shit. They, th they give you free stuff. Okay, so do that and support the channel. See, see how this works? Okay, so I have my 36 hour fast. During that fast, I'm having nothing but water, black coffee, or element electrolyte packets. Um, I set my macros according to the formula that we just meticulously walked to, walked through. And then what I also might do, if you go way back a few months, I did a video called uh, protein. It was all about a protein fast. It's this little hack that I like to use, especially with people who are working hard toward a particular aesthetic goal date to really keep the numbers moving and keep things in motion and keep that body fat coming off to kind of shake things up a little bit. A protein fast is, think of it as a fast consuming nothing but lean protein. Now, it's some people call this a protein sparing modified fast and you will see people do a protein sparing modified fast for a week, sometimes two weeks, very long term, and I do not recommend that. I think you can run into trouble with that. I think you're asking for, you know, some some disruption. I've seen it lead into eating disorders. I don't think you want to go that long on rabbit starvation, okay? But I think it's a fantastic trick or hack to incorporate, and here's how I like to do it, and here's how I've seen the best results from it. So you take one to two days a week. Once you kind of get the ball rolling, you got your macro set, you've been, you know, you, you, you've got through a week or two, you're cruising through, you got your numbers set, you, you've tested it, you know what you're doing, you're nailing everything. Then you might want to incorporate one or two protein fasts per week. And you never want to do those on consecutive days. Like you might want to do it on a Monday and a Thursday or a Tuesday and a Saturday. And you can watch that video. I'll try to put it there. You, and I'll put a link down below as well. Uh, you can watch that video. What it is is you take that one or two days per week, not consecutive, and you just consume lean protein. Things like chicken breast, white fish, egg whites, whey protein powder, things of that nature. One of my favorites was this animal uh, clear whey that they now have, which I think is absolutely spectacular. Uh, I use that if I do um, a protein fast. So what you're doing is you're taking your, your, your goal protein intake. You can actually bump that number up a little bit if you like. It's not going to hurt you. Protein does not want to store as fat. Protein wants to be utilized to repair cells, tissue, build muscle for recovery purposes. Uh, and then I, I dial my fat intake down to about 30 grams and I dump my carbohydrates down to practically zero. Now, other people do a, a protein sparing modified fast different. They take fat down to insanely low levels, like 10 grams, and they bring in some carbohydrates, you know, usually from vegetables. I still don't like vegetables. Even if I take in, like if I were to take in a bunch of vegetables on a protein day, it would just be bloat city, feel like shit, you know, and you wouldn't want to be in the same room with me. And it just sucks. You can get the same effect by taking in about 30 grams of fat, which is still going to be, you know, a healthy level of fat to retain hormonal output for that one day while you're jacking that protein up. You do that for one day and then you're right back to your normal macros the next day. Trust me on this. Do not prolong it to two days, three days a week, whatever. It's not a smart thing to do. Okay. Then it starts becoming a fad, trendy fad diet. And I just don't like it. I think it sets a bad precedence. Okay, so I'll throw in one to two protein days for about two, three, at the most four weeks as I'm approaching that goal date of being really lean for spring, summer event or whatever. And then I'll pull those because I don't really need them anymore. I want to make sure at that point I'm really nourishing my body and that, you know, I want to make sure I'm getting ample amounts of that healthy fat, just not too much. And I'm riding those macros into spring or summer or riding those macros into my goal date. I achieve that goal. I enjoy a lean chiseled physique for a few months. And then I pull out of that. 
and I reverse diet and I bring my macros back up, I might have a couple of refeeds and work my way up to more maintenance style calories. And then as I'm coming into maybe the winter months, I'll start planning a slight energy surplus as a time where I want to replenish and restore and recomp some muscle, perhaps even build some muscle. And yes, even old guys like me can build muscle if you do everything right. So I would, uh, that's how I do this. Now I wouldn't do uh, um, a deficit cut like this uh, for really any longer than about six to eight weeks. Um, then it becomes, can become a, an issue and it can cause problems. You know, I've had so many people come to me as new clients and I'll say, well, how long have you been in this deficit? And some have literally said a year. Some have said, you know, two years and they wonder why nothing's happening. You know, the body is not going to respond to, you know, lower calorie intake or lower energy intake long term, it starts to, as a defense mechanism, shut down or slow its metabolic processes because it thinks you're starving yourself to death. That's why you got to mix things up and have different periodized cycles of how you eat throughout the year, which I think is, is best. I like that better than even just staying at maintenance calories th oh. throughout the year. So anyway, um, so back to the, to the plan. I, wanna, I don't want to take this too long. My 36-hour fast, I set my macros accordingly. Uh, I might add one or two protein fasts per week, but I, I never let that go longer than three or four weeks. And then I just ride those macros into my goal, enjoy that, and then I'll start to reverse diet out of that up to more maintenance energy intake. Um, the only other thing I want to throw in with this now, some people out there are still not on board with this stuff. I've been on board with this stuff for years. Probably haven't been as vocal about it as I should, but it has been kind of a game changer for me and other people that I consult and work with. And that is uh, the recovery component of even a nutrition plan uh, is going to be very, very vital. Now, it goes without saying, maybe it doesn't, but it goes without saying to me, if you're watching this, you'd better be engaging in some strength training. You better be lifting heavy shit three to four days a week minimum, all right? And if you need a program, I've literally got ridiculously badass programs starting at 19 bucks. Go to robgoodwin.com, check it out. If you have questions, email me. But you need to be lifting heavy shit. You need to be doing some, a little bit of cardiovascular uh, exercise and or you need if you don't want to do cardio then if you're getting 12 to 15,000 steps a day just through a very active lifestyle that's probably just fine you probably don't need to go do extra cardio I just enjoy doing extra cardio I like that conditioning element I like the whole mental acuity aspect the best part of my day oftentimes is when I strap on a ruck and I go outside and go for a 30 40 minute ruck with fresh air and sunlight sunlight perfect segue into the last thing I want to talk about you're going to think this is foo-foo, hippie, crazy, dippy bullshit, but I'm telling you right now, if you can get in touch with your circadian rhythm, circadian biology and sun exposure plays a vital role along with your nutrition, along with your training, along with your sleep to producing the desired result. And it could be very, very as simple as, there's a reason why every challenge I do, every year I do a challenge, usually like on Facebook or social media, and I always include backing away from blue light stimulation, especially after sunset. If you can get into the habit of doing the following, in the morning, being outside, even if it's just sitting in your front yard, your front porch, your back porch, or going to walk the dog, be outside with no glasses on, no sunglasses, and as much exposed skin as possible as the sun is rising. That morning sunlight coming into your retinas is a vital component of your overwhelm, of overriding health, vitality. Everything is going to work better if you do that. Conversely, after the sun were to set, and, and try to get as much daily sun exposure as possible. When I can, I'll get that morning sun exposure you know, in my eyes. And then in the afternoon, I'll try to make sure, even if I'm just sitting in my backyard on a lawn chair, 
you know, if it's not freezing, I'll take my shirt off at least, or if, if I can, just shorts, and get as much sun exposure on my skin as humanly possible. I try to get at least 30 minutes a day. And then the last part of that circadian rhythm biology is after sunset, back off from blue light stimulation as much as humanly possible. Put the phone down, close the laptop, you know, try to limit that TV time, phone time, that shit is poison. And if you must get behind some of it, whatever, get some of the amber or blue light blocking glasses while you're forced to do that. Try to find regular time to uh, create a habit of spending some time using candlelight, spending some time maybe in the backyard around a fire pit, you know, and here's a novel idea. Instead of maybe watching TV or being behind screens, how about gathering loved ones, family, whatever, around that fire pit or around those candles and actually engaging in some actual conversation and tuning down the screen time. I'm telling you, if you make that a part of your day, your weight loss efforts will be amplified and everything works better, okay? So get in touch with that circadian light biology and avoid the blue light as much as possible and watch things take a dramatic turn for the better in your life. So, all right? And then the very final thing, yeah, I'm gonna throw in one more bonus tip. Almost all Americans especially are magnesium deficient. It's a freaking miracle. Uh, and they're also, we just talked about light, they're vitamin D deficient. The healthy cholesterol levels that you will be building with this animal-based diet, which are great, there's nothing wrong with cholesterol, that's a scam, do not believe that BS. As long as your triglycerides are low, especially and if they're under 100, especially under 80, I don't care what your cholesterol is, that's a bunch of crap, okay? Eat that animal-based diet and get sunlight, vitamin D, and magnesium. It all works together with those healthy elevated cholesterol levels for every good thing that happens in your body, testosterone, growth hormone, every good thing that happens, every awesome thing that you do, strength training, you know, output, you know, cardio, you know, sex, all of it, all these good things happen because of healthy cholesterol synthesized with that vitamin D, lots of levels of magnesium. So add that into your diet as well. And you're going to see everything change. It's like a damn superpower. Okay. So if you're looking to make that change, this is kind of my simple list of how I would embark on that, how I would do that. So get your diet in order, clean out the system, lift heavy shit, move around, get in touch with your circadian rhythm, your cir circadian light biology, your sun biology, you know, avoid that blue light stimulation, throw in the miracle of vitamin D and magnesium along with those healthy cholesterol levels and thrive, okay? So hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. That's why I do this crap, to get this information out to more people. And when you push the little red button, I show up to that little screen, you know, over there on the right of recommended videos and more people may be like, oh, what's that dude talking about? And they might click on it and then things get better. So anyway, hope everything's going well for you guys. I'll have another video, video coming next week. Please leave a comment and also in the comments, let me know if you have any questions or what you'd like to see me sit behind this camera and talk about. All right? Sound good? All right. I really appreciate you guys. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you so much for your support. Please tell a friend, tell an enemy, don't care. But until then, train hard, diet harder, but above all else, do whatever you got to do to have a fantastic day. Peace.